Hi, Model Chili here, and this is my Bandai Millennium Falcon in 1 to 144 scale uh, from the Force, Awak Force Awakens, obviously, with the new radar dish there. So, um, being a snap kit, it was quite a quick build. I've just put together the major uh, parts there, and then I'll just paint all of this in one go. And you can see the legs are in there. But these come out quite easily, so I haven't quite decided. I think I might just paint up the legs and the covers and then just swap, swap them out. And some of the other parts. Cockpit, corridor, because I still need to paint the interior. So I can't stick this down quite yet. But once um, all this is painted then I'll just be able to attach it on there and for the quad cannons so there's a clear piece that goes onto here on both sides so I need to stick that on after painting and then place it into position and then the ramp as well and yeah so I've used a little bit of glue on some of these small parts just to fix everything in place just so it doesn't move when I'm holding it and accidentally snap it off. But apart from that, you know, very little glue needed. These are so well engineered that everything just fits really snug. I mean, there's a little, there's a little bit of movement when you start squashing and squeezing it, but that won't be a problem once it's all painted. Won't be handling it that much. And yeah, so yeah, these feet are very. Very loosely fitting. Um, I might just end up sticking some blue tack up there or something to stop it falling. But as you can see along the sides here, all the fine detail that's gone in. So there's quite a lot of um, separate pipes that attach to here. It's very fragile. But they went in quite easily. They're just attached with a little bit of glue. On there and it's actually surprisingly symmetrical. I didn't realise that both sides are pretty much exactly the same detail. But yeah, so pretty pleased with it so far. Now I'll be applying the prime coat and then uh, start painting from there. Now for the uh, first base coat I'll be using uh, this NATO black so what this does is um, helps create shadows and shading for when I apply the top coat. Okay, so that's the black base coat down, with the, some of the smaller parts done as well. So now that's done, I'm going to put a very light undercoat of Vallejo Light Grey, so that'll, that'll just help bring out the 3D effect with the different shades of grey and black, once I put the top coat on. And now for the final top coat, I'm going to be using Vallejo's White Grey, which is a pretty close match to the uh, paint scheme in the painting guide.
Okay, so that's the top coat done on the top and the bottom. So as you can see, it's pretty uneven and pretty patchy, but uh, that's intentional. That's just to give it a sort of weathered look and it helps to bring out some of the shading. So um, and a lot of this will be covered with more weathering and other colored panels and stuff as well. So not too worried about the finish at this point. But as you can see, the cockpit extension's been put in place. And I've detailed up the cockpit, which is just basic, basic black and grey shading, and then dry brushing the buttons, and then a few red and white dabs. I wanted to keep it fairly simple since a lot of it's not going to be seen once the canopy's on. And all the other smaller parts have been painted, so the cannons that go on the top and the bottom. And there. The ramp, which I'm still debating if I'll use or not. And yeah, so I'll start painting some of the detailed parts and uh, move on to the figures. Okay, so I've put a uh, gloss coat over the entire model, so it's now ready for the decals, which will mainly be for the different coloured panels. Now I've decided to go for the decals instead of painting, because as you can see, there's a lot of fine uh, detail along the, the edges, which matches the, uh, the jagged panel lines. So that'll be quite tricky to mask up and paint, or to hand paint. So I'll give these a go and see how it um, turns out. And I've also put in the figures. As you can see there, there's Finn and Ray. And there with just a little bit of detailed paint. Trying to match their 
costumes as much as I could. And if I can get some light, you can probably see the some more of the cockpit detail in the back. So it is there, it's just quite hard to see with this lighting. And this is how they'll look with the canopies on. So there's another decal that goes over the top of the canopy frame. So even more of this is going to be covered up once it's all in place. But you can still see a little bit of detail through the glass. And yeah, so uh, time to put on some decals. Right, so that's the decal work done. Now this might sound a bit crazy, but I actually ended up using some of the uh, stickers from the sticker sheet as opposed to the, the decal panels. So there is a bit of a combination, there's uh, the decals, all the smaller de um, details are decals. Uh, a few panels are, but most of the panels are actually the stickers. Uh, the reason is, is because the decals I found were, were, weren't really conforming to the, the bumps and the lines and they had a really funny texture even when using multiple coats of Microsol. So I tried out a few of the stickers and they went down really quickly, really easily and they fit great to the all the different lines and the, the lumps and the bumps. So I just went ahead and just kept using them and I think it turned out great. So uh, I mean, I never thought in a million years I'd end up using stickers on a model kit, but for this particular kit, uh, most of them actually worked out really well. And so there's the bottom half. And yeah, so that's all the, the colour work done, and then the two extra gun sections there. So now I'll put together the cannon uh, canopy so that was using decals for the, uh, the frame there which turned out okay so now we attach Then the inner seat section. To there, and this is the yep, yeah, that's the top section. So that should slot. go on that side for some reason. Possibly the paint is making it extra tight fit. There we go. Right, sorted. Now for the bottom one. Probably attach the, the other bits first. Just the little details you've got to keep uh, track of. creaking and groaning there but it's all good. So that's the bottom cannon and the top one all complete. Okay so the models had a, an overall gloss coat ready for uh, some weathering. Uh, the canopy's been attached and the gun parts and yeah so everything's put together. The landing gear covers are painted so I might uh, weather those up 
So um, I've got the option of having either the legs down or the legs up. And yeah, so uh, now it's time for some tripping, which will do, which will be the first step of the weathering. Now I've done a video previously on my um, preferred method of chipping paint, which is just using a little piece of sponge, dabbing the um, base coat on the end, and then removing as much as I can, and then just start dabbing it where I want chipped paint. So get some white on there, get some paint on. It's actually a, slight, a slightly darker version of the base coat since the base coat wasn't was quite a light coat. So if I just use the uh, the base colour, it'll end up looking brighter than the actual coat, if that makes sense. But hopefully it won't matter too much in these small doses. So I'm going to keep the chipping quite light and small. There's a lot of the reference photos and uh, even the decal guide. There's not a lot of chipping. There's chipping on the coloured panels, but apart from that, it's relatively clean as far as Star Wars ships go, so I'm not going to go overboard. Just focus it mainly on the coloured panels. Should probably do. I was also remembering that the uh, areas that have got um, smoke or soot or burning. That would be chipped as well because it'll just be like another layer of paint. Okay, next step is to apply a little bit of black wash, just using Vallejo brand. Now I'm just using a pointed metal file just to uh, create a few scratch marks and dents uh, in a couple of places to create a bit of uh, battle damage. And now for an overall wash of Vallejo light grey.
Now for some of the uh, engine parts, I'm using Vallejo Oiled Earth Wash. Just to give it a bit more colour. Now just using a damp cotton bud, I'm just going to wipe away some of the uh, unintentional bits. There's like a few splashes and blobs of wash that need moving away. And these Vallejo washes are quite easy to uh, remove with water, even toning down some of the, uh, the lines. Okay, so here it is all complete. So we've put on a couple of coats of Tamiya Flat Clear just to lock everything down. And painted the stand up in different shades of sand. And yeah, it's all done. So I'm really pleased with how it came out. Um, especially the weathering and the, the wash and the shading, and the chipping. It uh, was a really fun kit to paint. I mean, most of the credit, I think, goes to Bandai for making such superb kits. I mean, these these things go together so well. They're just popping with detail. Very little effort's needed in putting these together. I mean, you don't even need glue. And, uh, yeah, it's basically just a, a fun painting job, really. But, uh, yeah, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. And the colours used and the, the decals and the, even the stickers. I mean, there's not really not much I can fault with this kit. So, uh, as you can see, I've taken the taken the feet off and replaced them with the doors, which and uh, which is another really nice thing that, about these Bandai kits is the fact that you can change interchange little details like that. So I can just pop this off the stand and have it sitting on its legs. And yeah, so there really isn't much more to say, really. Um, but let me know what you think. I'm always interested to know your feedback. Uh, likes or dislikes, any feedback is welcome. And also let me know if you've found any of the, the uh, techniques I've used in this video helpful or anything I'm doing wrong that you think I'm doing wrong or think I could be doing better. Just let me know. Most of the techniques I used for this I've used before on my Y-Wing model. The only thing I didn't do with that was the sort of extensive wash that I've given this. But yeah, so uh, let me know what you think. And I'm really tempted to build more of these Bandai kits now. I've got my eye on the uh, the two different X-Wings. And uh, hopefully they come out with more. I think I've seen on the internet that they're coming out with a A-Wing model from Return of the Jedi, which would be pretty cool. Hopefully they do a B-Wing sooner or later, because I think that's one of my favourite starfighters. And maybe even a uh, an old trilogy Millennium Falcon with the, the round classic radar dish. So yeah, um, so that's, that wraps that up then I guess, so I hope you've enjoyed watching. And uh, as I've said before, please leave feedback and let me know what you think. So until next time, take care.